One of the most difficult tasks people can perform, however much others may despise it, is the invention of good games. My name is Vanessa Camilleri, I teach at the University of Malta, and that was a direct quote from Carl Gustav Jung, a personality in psychology whose work has influenced many disciplines, including philosophy, anthropology, literature, and even religious studies. I choose to start my video presentation purposely with a quote from Jung to stress the importance of viewing game design from multiple perspectives and how these can in turn influence different disciplines. So how can this be done? Well, during the hours we have been allocated, you will have some time to start exploring how multiple perspectives can be introduced in your way of thinking. You will be focusing mostly on serious games and their design, and we will together explore the triadic game design method developed by Kasper Hartfeld in 2010. But before going in more depth about this design method, I would like to introduce the main focus of our sessions. You are going to be immersed into what it takes to be a good game designer. A serious game designer in this case. Every week we are asked the question, what skills do I need to be a game designer? This is an incredibly complicated question, one that James has had to wrestle with both vocationally and pedagog... pedagog... Ped this word. But this week, we're going to try and give you the best answer we've been able to come up with. So, what should you learn if you want to be a game designer? You ready? Everything. Seriously, game design is the art of crafting experiences, and you'll find yourself drawing on everything you have. To a great game designer, there is no useless knowledge. But not all of us have the time to learn everything that ever was or will be before starting to design experiences, so what should you focus on? Well, first, you can start with a game designer's single most core skill, communication. As you start to build games, most of you will find that you have to work with interdisciplinary teams, teams formed of people with radically different skill sets and backgrounds from you. If you work on video games, you'll have to work with artists, programmers, designers, producers, sound guys, marketers, and business people. If you can't communicate the experience you're trying to design to each of these groups, the quality of your ideas will not matter because these are the people that translate those ideas into an experience that reaches the world. The tricky part here is how different all these people are. I know it's a horrible generalization, but I'm going to say it anyway. Artists and programmers have a totally opposite, diametrically opposed way of approaching problems. And it's your job to make both of those people share the same vision. Which brings us to our next point, and this is extremely important. The game designer is not the same as a director. Your job is not to be a dictator, demanding people to implement your brilliant ideas. Everyone who touches a game influences its design, even if you don't intend for them to. When your programmer writes a physics system, the choices he makes are going to impact the design of the game. Anyone out there who thinks that the designer is the guy who gets to decide what the game is has some serious disillusionment ahead of them before they can excel at this job. So when you are designing a game, you're not alone. You cannot be, and you need to focus on a number of different perspectives. This is why I have chosen the triadic game design method to help you produce games with purpose, what we call meaningful games, the essence of serious games. Kasper Hartveld concentrates on three major players that contribute to this design. Reality, meaning, and play. And in these hours, you'll be able to understand how these come together to create a game that is fun, but that also has a particular purpose suited to a specific audience. Creating a game is hard work, but designing it right is even harder. Game design is a discipline. Just because you've played a lot of games, or a whole lot of a specific game, does not mean you're prepared to design games. Most of the time, designers don't play games, they study them and analyze them. They deconstruct their systems and test all their breakpoints. A designer will figure out where all the triggers are located, and then try and figure out why. They'll reverse engineer the math behind the principal systems. Designers are as fascinated by what makes an experience unfun as by what makes it fun. So what's going to happen? How is it going to happen? I will be seeing you next week, hopefully, and we shall together understand more about these ideas and how you're going to make them work. Our hours together will be in blended mode, meaning that you will be spending most of your time interacting online, but we shall also be having some face-to-face -face encounters. Yours will be mostly a hands-on activity, and at the end of your online experience, you will have carried out a series of tasks that will add up to your assessment, and most importantly, you will have come up with a design of a serious game. We'll discuss this next week. What would be expected from you? To work in groups, work online, share ideas. You will be expected to give feedback to your peers, and you will receive feedback from your peers. Accepting feedback and criticism is one good skill to learn when designing games. In the meantime, all that is left for me to say is... Be brave. Be bold. Create.